Welcome back! I'm Tyler, and welcome to The Ruffle Report, your leading news source for all things Lolita, now delivering all of the ruffle and none of the kerfuffle. I'm going to restrain my instincts towards linguistic violence, and you can take bets on how long that lasts before I'm found foaming at the mouth and wrist deep in some miscreant's chest cavity. Meanwhile, at the top of the segment, the Angelic Pretty and My Kira collaboration Rabbit Picnic Party has managed to sell out in Japan. This is despite the fact that it has an awkward purple umbrella in the dead middle of it that looks like Mary Poppins was in attendance right before things went full watership down. And whether or not we're looking at a crime scene aside, I bought it because it has bunnies on it, proving that my taste is entirely arbitrary and will be cast aside the moment you plaster a small furry animal in the rough vicinity of a skirt. Frankly, I have no idea how this series is going to perform in the upcoming USA release, but if I had to hazard a guess, we're either looking at a few OPs left in stock because because there's no shuring and AP has decided that sleeves are for skinny people, or the entirety of North America descends on the site at once and we get to see how much server space AP possesses and if it's equal to the amount of people fully prepared to disembowel someone over a dress full of rabbits having tea and wearing cute little hats. I'd mow down a stranger for a frock that met half of those qualifications, and speaking of the sudden need for corpse disposal, BTSSB has all your body bag needs covered with their recent release of their sweet best wishes One Piece. This thing looks like a glad trash bag with a $300 price tag, so either BTSSB is intending to hold a tea party in a dumpster, or the next trend is trying to look like an anthropomorphized bag of lawn trimmings. Whatever the case, this makes a perfect gift for someone you don't like and fervently hope gets picked up by sanitation workers, and given that their body will be indistinguishable from the other mounds of refuse in the local landfill, you should be given at least a week's worth of head start before the local authorities start wondering who caused a poorly dressed carcass to turn up next to last week's eggshells and a pile of various and sundry rats. I will not be held responsible for your murder charges. Meanwhile, Baby has also released some indecipherable gibberish disguised as French with a name that I am too American to even attempt. We are going to call it Alphabet Soup instead, and I am surprised to report that it remains fully in stock as of taping. I honestly like the way the ribbon is threaded through the top of the bodice, but then again, Again, we are in the middle of an aggressive OTT sweet boom in the Lolita community, and I wouldn't spend five dollars on this when I need every penny I have to battle the cryptids on Lace Market over a dress that two years ago would have sold for 70 bucks and a pack of gum. This dress is suffering from a serious case of doesn't have a single pony-itis, which reminds me that the Angelic Pretty Japan MTO for Sugary Carnival is going to start being delivered in only three months from now, which goes to show just how little I care about this creative use of structural features in the face of saccharine horses floating in a sea of sucrose. The wait for this fracking dress is nearly killing me. And while we're on the subject of things that require patience that I don't have, Royal Princess Alice's new series, Forest Merry-Go-Round, should be delivered in August of this year. It comes in pink and sax colorways. And if you were wondering what would happen if Angelic Pretty's Sugary Carnival and Fantastic Carnival met under a bridge, found solace in each other's arms, and constantly their relationship before forgetting what a horse looked like, then this noodle-legged abomination is right for you. There's also a rabbit having some sort of existential crisis, a cat that seems profoundly unconcerned to have sprouted a horse's butt, and a mouse whose face is currently representing how I feel about the situation. That thing looks like Cube from Madoka Magica, and I wouldn't be surprised to find out that it orchestrated this entire affair. I should also mention that a head bow and an incredibly wonky looking bonnet was released along with it should you like to live dangerously or possess a concerning amount of starch. All I'm saying is that that thing is already sagging on the model, so I'm interested in knowing what devil you think you'll be praying to to keep it standing up when RPA couldn't manage it through one shoot with Photoshop on their side. All that said, this is by far one of the least offensive releases I've seen out of this brand, making it incredibly impressive if you grade on a curve. And as that about wraps up the week, we turn to our social news tidbit for the evening. And more specifically, a post
Post and Ruffle Chat from an OP whose partner is non-binary, generally more male presenting, and felt like a feminine style like Lolita Fashion wasn't meant for them. The OP then asked for examples and support from other non-binary Lolitas to help convince their partner that they were welcome in the fashion. And while I am not non-binary myself, it did make me want to say that for anyone who is and is looking at Lolita from the outside in, hesitating because they are worried that wearing feminine clothing will in some way invalidate their gender identity identity. I just want to say that that is not how any of this works. You cannot buy your gender identity on a clothing rack at Ross. And by that very same logic, no matter what you put on your body, nothing you can wear can in any way invalidate said identity. Prime example, if I take a cis guy and dress him up like Dolly Fracking Parton, that does not in any way make him a woman. It does make him incredibly disconcerting to cis men who are insecure in their manhood. However, nothing I can get him to wear is going to alter his masculinity in any way. While we're on the subject, it hasn't escaped my notice that non-binary people are often expected to dress in a strangely unisex way to be valid, unisex almost always leaning towards more masculine styles as a standard, which is weird considering the very point of being non-binary is to live outside the expectations of, well, the mother-flipping binary. What I'm trying to say here is that, simply put, a a non-binary person in a skirt is valid. A non-binary person in pants is valid. A non-binary person cosplaying Ayato from Diabolic Lovers has questionable taste in anime, but is valid. And finally, while Lolita is an expression of hyperfemininity, that doesn't mean that it's exclusive to women. Femininity is not a commodity to be owned or restricted to or by any gender. And while I would never pressure anyone with dysphoria or a vested discomfort to wear any fashion that they don't want to, in the case of people who are hesitating because they feel like other people will question their non-binary identity if they wear a dress, I want you to know that you deserve better than the little box other people want to put you in to make themselves comfortable. You do not owe anyone a particular brand of public non-binary presentation. And in my humble opinion, every second you spend worrying about some bag of hot air thinking you're not envy enough to meet their hoity-toity standards instead Instead of wearing a dress with bunnies on it so you can have a little bit of fun before the ice caps melt and we all have to identify as fish is fracking wasted. So go do the thing. I'm going to go lie down and before you leave I'd like to thank my patrons for making whatever the frack you just saw possible. And should you like to join their number you can head over to patreon.com slash lastweeklolitanews for more content that generally speaking is best not seen ever by anyone for any reason. Thanks again guys and I'll catch you next time.